We did an in-depth review of the Mi Pad 5 Pro last year, and at that time, we thought the Mi UI software was a big drawback on Mi Pad. After one year, Xiaomi didn't launch the Mi Pad 6 Pro, but only brought us a larger screen version of Mi Pad 5 Pro, which is the larger size in Mi Pad to date. So does a bigger screen really bring a more delightful experience with better performance? Let's take a look. Well, from the front face, it seems that the new Mi Pad Pro has only been enlarged in equal ratio without a change in bezel size or button layout. But turning to the back, we can see that the camera module has been redesigned. Although we've seen this design many times from Xiaomi 12 series, we have to say it is still look delicate when it appears on such a tablet. This time, the keyboard contact is placed on the top left corner of the back cover, right next to the logo. Due to some kind of Apple stereotypes, I always feel that the metal contacts should be hidden up and stay on the center of the bottom. Xiaomi has further reduced the thickness of the body and there are no antenna cutouts on the frame, which makes it look neat and integrated as well. But unfortunately, the screen is not completely inlaid inside the frame but protrudes a bit from the frame. Even for such kind of LCD panel, this plastic bracket is really not a smart design either. Another drawback is that the fingerprint reader got removed from the power button. So yes, you are right to be concerned. There is no delicate bias sensor on this Pro tablet for secure unlock. Instead, you can only use the lower security 2D face recognition to unlock the device. And it's pretty easy to fail to unlock in a dark light environment. Otherwise, you would have to use a password way to unlock the new Mi Pad. The other buttons have not changed, which is not a problem, but there is a fatal flaw on a Mi Pad that hasn't been fixed so far. And I guess Mi Pad users have already guessed what it is, but I will talk about it later. The new tablet features the largest screen ever on the Mi Pad. The 12.4 inches sounds like a big size, but with the ultra wide display ratio, the tablet is not too big to hold in hands. With a little adjustment to the layout of the touch buttons in the games you play, it's not a huge problem to play any of the game that you used to play on your phone. But of course, it won't be so comfortable since the tablet is not in a handy touchable size that can be held for a long time. Of course, the most enjoyable use of the widescreen is watching films. Although the tablet uses an LCD display panel rather than an OLED, it is still good at displaying colors with rich detail. HDR content looks good here and it also supports Dolby Vision, which for daily use is more than enough. However, in the audio experience, there's a downgrade. Compared to the Mi Pad last year, the number of speaker units is reduced by half, as many users buy tablets only for entertainment, this change is quite confusing. So I really wonder why Xiaomi make this decision. We've seen a lot of tablets with Snapdragon 870 platform last year and even this year. So actually, there's not much to talk about its performance and the gaming experience. Anyway, we still did some tests. Last few weeks, we made a video about Genshin Impact Verse 3, and as all you know, it takes the performance demands of mobile gaming to a new level once again. Snapdragon 870 is a good platform, but it's not the best option already. On the other hand, Xiaomi still made some improvements in memory options. Now you can buy the tablet with up to 12GB RAM, which means it can more smoothly run multitasking features such as a split screen and a flexible window modes. In the review last year, we thought that incomplete MIUI was a stumbling block for the Mi Pad to become a well-functioned tablet. After one year, Xiaomi finally launched the MIUI 13 for Pad, so can it make the Mi Pad really shake up the iPad this time? Well, probably not. Xiaomi still lags behind the competition in tablet OS design. Since Steve Jobs released the first generation of the iPad, as he defined it, the tablet is used as a third screen connecting the phone and the computer. Well, MiShare on MiUI for Pad illustrates this definition very well. Now you can have apps on your phone to seamlessly run on the tablet display, even if the application is not installed on the tablet. When a supported app is running on your phone, it will be displayed on the right side of the dock on the tablet, and you just need to tap it to complete the transfer. 
Does this all look familiar? Yes, Huawei's Harmony OS has already implemented these features and is even more powerful. By far, the MIUI doesn't support transferring audio alone or project games to another device. Although you can achieve this by transferring the phone display via Smart Hub, trust me, no one is willing to play games with such a perceivable legs. For Xiaomi, this is a direction worth of effort, but in the details, Xiaomi still has a lot to improve, such as the most commonly used gestures. Until now, you could only swipe up in the indicator bar area to activate the multitasking window. For such a large screen device, this is really inconvenient. What's even more puzzling is that when you lock the home screen layout, you can't even drag and drop any app on the dock to launch split screen multitasking. I just want to launch multitasking without mischanging the goddamn home screen layout. Is there really any contradiction between these two things? Are these two wishes really in conflict? Another detail is what I mentioned at the beginning of the video. As you know, you may use a tablet in any direction. So on the iPad, when the direction of gravity changes, the volume buttons will swipe. If you use the device upside down, the button pointing down is to reduce the volume, which is very consistent with human intuition. But the Xiaomi designers do not think so. The volume buttons remain the same no matter what position you hold the tablet in. So when you pick up the Mi Pad for watching a video and want to address the volume, you better confirm the direction first. Well, that's all I want to share with you today about the 12-inch Mi Pad Pro 5. If you want a conclusion, I don't really recommend you to buy the larger screen version because of the disappearance of fingerprint reader, 5G connection, and GPS. If you just want to use the tablet to play games or watch videos, its speaker system is also not as good as its predecessor. I'm afraid the only thing worth acknowledging is the larger battery and the USB port upgrade. Thank God Xiaomi finally put USB 3 on their mobile devices, but we don't know whether it's just exclusive for the new tablet. In terms of system UI, all I can say is that I hope Xiaomi will stick with it and not half as it like before. Also, Xiaomi is abandoning openness and I really don't want to be able to connect my Mi Pad or Xiaomi phone only on my Xiaomi laptop. So guys, what do you think about the new Mi Pad and the latest Mi UI? Please leave your comment down below. Thank you for watching. I'm Will from Gizmo China. See you next time.